Welcome to Nineworks TV. Today, two 80s 911 superstars in the 3.2 Carrera and the wide body 930 Turbo. Two very different 911s with very different characteristics. We want to know which one's best. So I'm here at Philip Raby with these two Prussian blue beauties, as you can see behind me. As I said at the start of the video, we've got two very different expressions of 1980s Porsche 911. Naturally aspirated and narrow body, wide body, and force induction, of course, being for the latter car with the 930 Turbo. Now, at this point, I want to bring on Will from Phil Raby. So you and I were chatting off camera yeah. about the virtues of both of these cars. Yeah. I think when we spoke on the phone, I did say that the 3.2 would probably be my, my choice of um, ownership if I was going to own a car. Okay. Saying that, I have been driving the, uh, the turbo for the last couple of days. I had it in London over the weekend, and you just can't stop smiling. Um, it just gets addicting. I got through a lot of fuel, but every time the power, you know, the turbo kicks in, it is so much fun. I mean, it's very rare to see a Prussian blue G-body, I think. I don't see too many of them. It's rarer still to have them both in your stock. Yeah. I think it's worth pointing out. So this 930 Turbo, yeah. I mean, they're 300 horsepower as standard, but this isn't standard, yeah. it's been fettled. So it's, it is a bit different. So it's got a hybrid turbo on it. Um, so the boost is supposed to come in slightly earlier and then more of it. Um, You're thinking that's 400 horsepower now? Yes, okay. yeah, around about. Um, it's also got a much bigger intercooler, it's sitting a little bit lower, riding a little bit firmer. It, it's the same feel, you know, it is just a slightly faster version of you still get that same acceleration, the same sound, the same everything. So we've got naturally aspirated, 3.2 litres, 231 horsepower, five speed gearbox. Yep. And obviously a narrow body, so the 930 turbo, wide body, forced induction, at least 400 horsepower yeah, really. Definitely at least. And four speed manual speed, yeah. let's dive in while the sun's still out and go and yeah. go and have a drive <laughs> there's a real argument anyway that the 1980s was the peak of the sports car uh, ultimate performance without being hindered by any uh, driver age certainly not to the level that we know today and this was porsche's effort you had its 911 lineup which was naturally aspirated 3.2 Carrera or 930 Turbo looking at that car ahead and they really are completely different I mean the 930 has an extra 30% of power has pretty much double the torque uh, in Newton meters not far off anyway but also the price was near enough double as well this was 61,000 Deutschmarks when new the 930 Turbo in 3.3 litre form which that car is uh, 119,000 Deutschmarks so there's far more to it than merely naturally aspirated and turbo but they do share a couple of things namely at its heart the flat six engine both type 930 coded flat six engines with a stroke of 74.4 millimeters uh, the bore though is slightly different it's 97 mil on the turbo it's 95 on the 3.2 both obviously manual and rear wheel drive but therein the differences are pretty stark. Now that's 3.3 litre in capacity. This had 212 newton metres. The turbo uh, in latter form, 430 newton metres. Massive, massive punch. The turbo as well has a four speed gearbox and that really is part of the charm for me in those cars, which we'll talk about later. This has a five speed gearbox straight from the factory in the form of the 915. It's got a smaller track width front and rear. It's also got skinnier Fuchs wheels and it's a lighter car as well by a good 100 odd kilos. So as I said, they are completely different and it is reflected in the price that you can pretty much pay double for a turbo today. Speaking of the turbo, let's see how Will's getting on with all 400 horsepower of it. Now we're in the drive, you can probably put that power down a bit better. As we mentioned earlier on in the video, this car isn't particularly standard. It has got a bigger hybrid turbo, a bigger intercooler, and it's probably producing around 400 horsepower, which does make for quite a beast on these sort of semi-wet, semi-dry roads. And that's kind of what I love about it. it. It really, you do have to think. There's a lot of thinking. You're in a corner, you can't, 
you can't just let it slam into us, you know, one and a half bars of boost and put you the wrong way in a ditch. It does feel wider, and that's kind of what I love about the, the narrow G bodies is you feel like you've got so much road, whereas with this, you, you do feel like you're driving a bit, a bit, it's a bit of a different, different beast altogether. Having driven this for a couple of days, starting to get a bit, you know, used to it, I'm really enjoying it, and I think that's partly because I'm extremely fickle, so whichever 911 I was in last tends to be my favourite. But actually, this is a car that I, I won't forget for a number of reasons. You know, I know turbos are all a lot of fun, they crackle and pop and make a lot of noise, but this car is stupid on a whole other level. Of that 9:30, right? So it is a bit moist today, as you've seen. 9:30's gone already. That has definitely got far more than 300 horsepower, factory horsepower that those cars came with. There is no question. But what well, this car has is a lot of mechanical grip. Actually, just threading this down the road. It's lovely. Where it's narrow bodied, I feel like I can use a little bit more of the road for fast cornering uh, without taking the mickey. Just get that nose stuck in. Oh. There were a lot of changes for the 3.2 and the 930. They uh, very much enjoyed slow evolution over their uh, lifespan. For example, 1985, uh, the vents became bigger on the dashboard. Uh, the sport seats were redesigned. They sat 20 mil lower. The four-spoke uh, leather-wrapped steering wheel became standard specification. Lots of subtle changes. Of course, in 1986, the 3.2 Carreras, they got the G50 gearbox where reverse was left and up rather than right and down. The 915, I've said before, the difference between a good and a challenging drive in a G-body car def comes down to that gearbox. If you've got a good 915, it's your best friend. If it's working against you, it just makes the drive so much more difficult. Uh, this one here is okay, to be honest, particularly now it's warmed up. Sometimes you have to double de-clutch when it's colder, but again, that's not abnormal at all. Uh, there's a lot of mechanical grip. I just don't feel like there's a lot of inertia. I mean, ultimately, it's 231 maximum horsepower delivered at 5,900 rpm it revs to I think 6.4 so it's not a particularly peaky engine by any stretch of imagination but again peak torque delivered at 4.8 weight as well it's about 1200 kilos so it's not the quickest Porsche 911 known to man but I think overall the fun and charm of the Carrera is in its chassis the chassis is good, fun, focused. This is a sport car. You can tell it's a sport car because it has the rear wing on it. It's got a deeper uh, front chin and also it's got sport suspension. That's the difference basically between a sport and a non-sport. So then the 3.2, eminently fun car. Time then to jump in the 930, see what forced induction 911s are all about. Oh dear, okay. I absolutely love 930s. As I've said elsewhere on this channel, I still think they look so impressively mean. Just got so much road presence, so much charm, so much appeal. And the way they drive is just awesome. Completely different to modern day turbos. Far more characterful in my view. And again, going back to its time, the 1980s, it was double that car ahead, the 3.2 Carrera, but this was a car that could hit 160 mile an hour and locked a full second off a 0 to 60 time. This is doing it in 5.1 seconds. And yes, it was rather more portly, tipping the scales at 1,300 kilos. The Carrera's a good 100 kilos lighter. But I mean, the reality is the turbo had everything spec'd. And it does feel different to drive, it has to be said. I do feel like I'm driving something slightly more special than the narrow body car and looking out the mirror and seeing the big wide tea tray wing looking out the side mirrors and seeing the big wide arches it definitely adds i think to the experience and that's before i've put my foot down is the reality i said earlier when driving the 32 carrera i enjoyed watching the 930 turbo go down the road uh, just the road presence and its wider meaner uh, appearance well actually Watching the 3.2 Carrera go down the road is just as uh, endearing, I think, but in a completely different way. It just looks so dainty. 
And again, watching Will thread the corners together just hammers home my earlier point. He can really use and exploit the road, having fun at sensible speeds and just playing with the chassis on that car. With this, I feel like my throttle application has to be more considered. And don't get me wrong, there's uh, a charm and a, an enjoyment to be had from that. They're just two completely different ways to drive essentially the same car, in both being 911s. But that kind of is where the similarities end. And where Will, for example, has just had fun sewing the corners together in the narrow bodied and much lighter 32 Carrera, I think my fun is just about to be had in the wide body turbo. I mean, to think that this is the best part of 40 years old, very nearly, that acceleration is utterly explosive, properly hilarious, more so, I think, than a modern day car, because in a modern day car, there's a lot of uh, computers and torque vectoring and uh, obviously the four wheel drive and everything else uh, doing a lot of work for you, <laughs> whether's this. No, this is proper fairground ride stuff. Strap in and hold on. Which car would I rather have? It's quite difficult. This is really two cars rolled into one. It is Jekyll and Hyde. The 930 can act as the 32 Carrera when it's off boost, and then when it comes on boost, then there's a whole new dimension of performance. But then there's a quiet confidence about the 32 Carrera, which I quite like. It is a lot more dainty. It's a lot more playful at lower revs. I think you can get stuck into that car a little bit more. So then, let's see what Will thinks. I tell you what, this is a totally different car. I know they're both made by the same manufacturer at a similar time. You do then get back in the 3.2 and it makes a lot of sense. See, the power delivery is so predictable, obviously, which does in some ways make for more enjoyable drive because you can actually use that power to its to its full potential. It's not making me smile the same way it does, the same way that power delivery does in the turbo though. Driving quite sensibly, but they're, they're much narrower tires, and you do have a lot of a lot of control. There's a lot that can be done with the throttle to help with the handling. You can really feel the the, the steering steering with the throttle through the corners. And that's another really crucial thing. You can, you can have fun in this without going fast. And I do think I'm probably having more fun in this than I would do in the turbo, and that's surprising me. It's so predictable, so smooth. You can really use the road. I am genuinely enjoy, enjoying driving this, probably more than the turbo. And the strange thing is, I get to drive these all the time. Turbos we don't, we don't see so many of. And it's made me realise that actually I take them for granted. It's such a foreign concept, this talking to yourself in a car, talking to two cameras, but I feel like I'm getting used to it. All right then, Will. <laughs> so, there we go, both our Prussian blue Porsches. What are yeah. your thoughts? I'm going to end up going for the 3.2. For the narrow body? Yeah, which is originally when we spoke on the phone, what I said I would prefer. Then I've been driving the turbo a bit and thought, oh, this is a lot of fun and thought maybe this is going to pip the, you know, because you just don't stop smiling. But actually this road's a really nice road, it's a good windy road. And you can have more fun in the 3.2 with the predictable power. You know, it's just so much more usable. The turbo, uh, where it has that docile side that's called Jekyll and Hyde, with the turbo you get a bit of 3.2 Carrera personality in there, but then yeah. when you want to turn the wick up you get full fat turbo, which this car doesn't have. That's a bit of a show pony. You take it down the pub and people look at it and go, wow, and you know, you, you, you take it on days out and people do turn their heads and look at it. It's, it's a good point. That's got a lot more presence on the road than that car has, definitely. Yeah. Sledgehammer, scalpel. Yeah, 100%. Well, I guess if we've got to leave where we are now and head back to Philip Raby HQ, you're yeah. choosing this car. Yeah. I certainly don't mind driving this. No. It's by no means a silver medal, so no. we'll do that. We'll wrap up for today. We'll take the cars back. Goes without saying, thank you very much for watching. As always, we hope you enjoyed our drive with these two 1980s Porsche 911s. Very been different good fun. persuasions. It has been yep. good fun. And we'll see you again soon for another episode of Nine Mics TV.